Welcome fellow chemists to the first of many videos on the reactions of the alkenes. This particular video introduces many ideas we will encounter in future ones, but it only focuses on the addition of the hydrogen halides. The hydrogen halides are familiar to you, and they are hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. The manner in which all of these halides react is identical, so if we understand one, we get the other three for free. When I said addition a moment ago, I really meant it. The entire hydrogen halide is literally added to the alkene. As you can see in these examples, the double bond disappears and the hydrogen adds to one of the original sp2 carbons and the halide to the other. Even when the double bond is on a ring, the result is the same. That's all there is to it. Well, actually, not really. If the sp2 carbons are bonded to identical sets of substituents, yes, it is that easy. However, if they are bonded to different substituents, we may end up with two different products, so we will need to recognize when we are faced with such a possibility and what that means for the process overall. So let's take a look at 2-methylbutylene. On closer inspection, the left sp2 carbon is bonded to CH2 on the right, CH3 above, and another CH2 on the left. Meanwhile, the right sp2 carbon is only bonded to a carbon on the left. So these carbons are not bonded to identical substituents, meaning we should expect two different products after addition of the halide. We will go into detail of the mechanism later, but I'll take hydrogen and add it to the left sp2 carbon first. This results in a carbocation which the bromine adds to second. This first product is 1-bromo-2-methylbutane. If I add the hydrogen to the right sp2 carbon first, we again generate a carbocation but it is slightly different, which means the bromine adds to a different location, generating a different product with a different name, 2-bromo-2-methylbutane. These products, though, are not created equal because one of them is formed more than the other and is referred to as the major product and the other as minor. Sometimes the major product is the only product of the reaction, but why the discrepancy in the first place? Well, the clue is in the intermediate. Carbocations are ions where there is a positive charge on a carbon atom. The four simplest carbocations are named and identified in the same way that the radicals were, methyl, primary, secondary, and tertiary, and we can also label them the same way. Luckily for us, the stabilities of the carbocations are also as they were for the radicals. The methyl cation is basically not worth considering, and tertiary carbocations are far and away the most stable, followed by secondary, then primary. Like the radicals, the more stable ones are more likely to be produced. This means that the halide is more likely to be added to that position. Thus, the type of carbocation formed influences product formation. So let's change the original molecule a bit and use chlorine instead. The change to chlorine has absolutely no effect, but what about the structure of the molecule? If we add the hydrogen to the right sp2 carbon, we get a secondary carbocation. The chlorine will then add to the other carbon and we get 2-chloro-3-methylbutane as the product. If we switch it around and add hydrogen to the left sp2 carbon, we get a tertiary carbocation. The chlorine then adds to the other carbon and we get 2-chloro-2-methylbutane as the product. The tertiary carbocation being more stable and forming more often results in this being the major product. We would consider the 2-chloro-3-methylbutane as a minor product if it even forms at all. Therefore, this reaction is regioselective because the production of one of the potential products is favored. You probably have noticed that these products have different structures, but the exact same formula. In general, they were referred to as isomers, and this is an example of a structural isomer. But not every reaction is regioselective and produces one isomer more than the other. In the case of hex2-ene and hydrogen bromide, the intermediate is always a secondary carbocation with the charge on the second or third carbon from the left. With the stabilities of the intermediates being so similar, the expected distribution of 2-bromo and 3-bromo hexane would be approximately 50-50. So let's look at the mechanism itself for the original reaction of HBr and 2-methylbutylene and only concern ourselves with the major product. HBr is polar and because bromine is more electronegative that makes its end slightly negative and hydrogen slightly positive. The hydrogen is now an electrophile and luckily the alkene has electrons to spare. The double bond supplies the electrons the electrophilic hydrogen desires. The new bond between the molecule and the hydrogen can end up on either sp2 carbon, but if it bonds to the right carbon, we get a tertiary carbocation, which is the most stable. So once the hydrogen adds to the right sp2 carbon, we have what is called a carbocation intermediate. 
The charge on this tertiary carbocation is on the left carbon where the double bond used to be. While this was happening, the bromine has accepted both electrons at once shared with hydrogen and is now a nucleophilic bromide ion. The carbocation is an electrophile which attracts the bromide. The bond then forms giving us our final product, 2-bromo-2-methylbutane. This reaction is regioselective because one potential product is favored. This electrophilic addition reaction introduces us to Markovnikov's rule, which states that the hydrogen will add to the sp2 carbon that is bonded to more hydrogens. On this model, the carbon on the left is bonded to one hydrogen, while the carbon on the right is bonded to two. According to Markovnikov's rule, the hydrogen should add to the carbon on the right. This means that the halide, represented by the letter X, will go to the left carbon. For the reactions we have seen, we can actually restate this as, the halide adds to the carbon bonded to fewer hydrogens. This means that the hydrogen will go on the right, and the halide will go on the left, where there is only one hydrogen. So as you can see, following either statement produces the same result. This rule, though, is more of a guide because we have seen a reaction that follows the rule to make one product with the potential to ignore the rule and produce a slightly different one. What Markovnikov's rule actually predicts is the major product of electrophilic addition. However, modern understanding has provided us with a more general rule. The electrophile adds to the sp2 carbon bonded to more hydrogens. Keep in mind there are other factors that may result in major and minor products. Having a general rule is good for us to know as we continue our journey into the reactions of the alkenes. In summary, the addition of hydrogen halides on alkenes is just that, the addition of one hydrogen and one halide to the carbons of the double bond. When possible, the halide favors addition to a tertiary position over a secondary or primary position. For these simple reactions, we see this because, according to Markovnikov's rule, the electrophilic hydrogen first adds to the carbon bonded to more hydrogens, and primary positions have the most hydrogen followed by secondary. The mechanism involves a pair of electrons from the double bond forming a new bond with the hydrogen of the hydrogen halide. The result is a carbocation, an electrophile, and a halide ion, a nucleophile. Finally, a pair of electrons from the nucleophile is used to form a bond between it and the carbocation. The result is a haloalkane. Some processes are regioselective, which means one potential product is favored over another. This happens when two different carbocation intermediates are possible, and we would expect the more stable one to have a greater influence on the outcome. So tertiary products would always be predicted as major, and secondary would be over a primary. When the potential carbocations are of the same degree but not structurally identical, we would expect an approximately equal distribution of potential products. In the next video, we will continue covering alkene reactions with the addition of water. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as I have more in development. These two previous videos on the naming of ethers and alcohols will be very useful for naming the products we will see in the next two videos. As usual, feel free to get in touch with me via email, social media, or if you would like, make a request in the comments.